Well, that looked pretty cool to me. Yes, first incendiaries, but they're going to get bigger and better from here. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm back with my trebuchet. Yes, you heard that right. I mean, I don't suppose you could have missed it after the last film. And I'm still grinning because I have a trebuchet. I've got the Holy Trinity now. I've got a GoPro, a pumpkin and a trebuchet. So there is really only one thing that we can do. Well, you probably guessed it. I'm going to send one of my GoPros on a flight because I've hit one with the plumbata. I've shot one with an arrow, but I've never trebucheted one. And there we go. The latest of my brave little GoPros, nicely seated in its pumpkin. And seriously, I am actually expecting this to live because in a scientific way, this is going to reduce its deceleration. It is, it's got nothing hard in there that's going to fracture the case. So in reality, I suspect the GoPro will be just fine. I might be wrong, I've been wrong before. Right, let's load up and let's shoot. Ready? Loose! Well, the first thing I've learned about trebuchets is keeping your GoPro is actually a pumpkin is surprisingly difficult. I never thought I'd say that phrase. The real reason that I'm here is not about that junk. I thought I'd give you something fun at the beginning. The real reason I'm here is to explain some of the decisions that I made when I was making this machine. Because if I was making it as a real historical replica, I would not have made it quite like this because I took some shortcuts. I did some other things, you know, a little bit naughty in the historical world. But what you need to remember is I delivered this thing in, well, two and a half weeks. It restricts you in the way things like the timber that you can get, you know, the choices that you have to make about design. But then also they wanted weird things to happen. So they wanted a variety of things thrown, but they didn't know what that was going to be. Some would be really light, some would be heavy. One of the things mentioned was the washing machine. So I had to make it big enough to do all these kind of things. So I'll give you a tour of the machine now and I'll take you through bit by bit what I did and why I did it. And then also what I'm going to change because tomorrow I'm coming back in with my mate Bill and we're going to do some mods on this and we're going to basically get it into a state where we can start throwing things a bit further because at the moment it's probably a bit delicate for that. Anyway, here's the guided tour. So first of all, in terms of overall construction, Part of the brief was to make it look medieval. You know, it didn't want to be made of, of pine. It didn't want to be made of welded steel. So the whole thing has been made of oak. Almost all of it in 15 centimetres square, except for these main beams here running along, which are 15 by 20. So I couldn't get them long enough to run all the way to the end. So I had to put an extension for the winch. But I'll show you that in a minute and explain why that made my, some of my winch choices as they were. So then the main construction here I think probably historically they did beef up their machines uh, with steel plates and steel fittings. These things moved around a lot. There's a lot of very rapidly mo moving forces that are going in different directions. I don't suppose they did it with hex headed bolts, but time. So I've got some big steel plates here, but then these main beams are also bolted through. So it's not tenon and mortise joints, which you would expect on a historical structure. That's kind of the attitude I've done through this. I've made it look pretty historical because don't forget this is being seen really from a little distance. Up close, anybody who knew anything about timber framing, they could see what I'd done and they could see it was a big cheat. But from a bit of a distance, looks great. Let's go have a look at the winch. So what I would have really liked was these to have been about a meter longer. But instead I had to bolt these extensions on here for the winch. Now what that means, without any extra timber work, these are always going to be, you know, not that strong. So what I've done is I've arranged the winch in such a way that it's pulling directly along the line of that beam, which means that the beam is, is still strong, rather than pulling the arm down onto that, which is going to be putting that into bend. Now it's got quite a big winding drum on it and actually probably a little bit too big, I think, because it is, as you can see, quite difficult. However, I did have to consider that there was a reload time on this filming because everything's about the film. It's not about me. Nobody cares about me. They care about the film. So you've got to reload quickly because they want to shoot again quickly. Time is money. So a bigger winding drum, you can reload quicker, even if you've got to do some work. But you only have to do that work for two hours one afternoon. In reality, and that's what I'm going to do now, 
This whole winding drum, I'm going to reduce in diameter, which will give the winch more power. It'll make it easier for me to load, but slower. That means, because I'm fairly close to the limit, I think, that means I can put a bigger weight in the counterweight. And that is definitely what we all want. Now, for the original brief, we wanted this thing to, to look medieval, to be medieval. And so I found these old pulleys here, these old um, iron and, and wood sheaves. And they work, and they work well, you can see that. But I've got no way of knowing how strong these are. I've got no way of knowing what the load is going to be on these before they fail. I like life, all right? You know, it's more than just a YouTube film. So I have bought some bigger pulleys. Unfortunately, you know, nice big chunky ones that I can believe in the rating. Unfortunately, they're bright orange, but I guess I might paint them. But in the meantime, I'm going to re-rig this with those ones. The next set of problems we're going to talk about is all to do with the width of this machine here and actually what happened when I filmed it originally. Now, if you remember back, this was made for the computer game, the launch of the computer game, Age of Empires 4, and they wanted to do wacky, crazy stuff. They wanted to throw stupid things around. Unfortunately, a lot of things which were very light were chosen, and that made the machine not work very well. But what it also did is it caused damage, because you want a heavy projectile, you know, relatively heavy, because what it does is it damps the movement of the machine. It damps the, the viciousness of the arm swinging around and the counterweight dropping. And without that, you put a massive amount of stress on the axle at the top. And actually as well, the whole basket as it comes down just jiggles about and gets very excited. And that is what happened. And if you look at that, you can see it's actually crooked. It's crooked because it whacked one of these supports on the day and it bent the whole thing. So I've got to straighten that back out. I'm going to put some more guide rails on the side and I'm going to look after it. So I'm going to shoot heavier weights. That's what these things are like. And then that won't be a problem. But what the problem is, it still remains, is the whole width of it. Now, they wanted to shoot crazy things. They kept on talking about one of the things was washing machines. So that's why the gutter is really wide. That's why the A-frames are wide, to give clearance, right? But what that means is you end up with a weak axle. So I'm going to come back in tomorrow and put some extra support under that axle. It is, to be honest, 50 millimeter solid steel bar. It's going to take a bit of beating. But nonetheless, I'm going to put some supports under it and that will help to bring um, the effective edge of the A-frames in. Next up, I'm going to replace the sling. I'm going to do a more conventional netted one. Now, I actually did this one, obviously with a lot of rope work, and then a linen liner. The reason for that was I didn't know what was going to be thrown. And so I didn't want it catching on anything. I wanted a smooth surface. So there was reasoning behind it, but, you know, it's day has passed now for me. But the other thing is, it's actually relatively heavy. And anybody who gets involved in, in bows, for instance, will know that the more mass you have out at the limb, limb tips, the more it matters. Because the inertia of that mass goes up as a cube with the distance from the center of rotation. Common English, basically, the longer your stick is, the harder it is to wave about. This thing, you know, adds, the sling adds two or three meters onto the length of the arm. So that's now five or six meters out from the center of rotation. Any mass makes quite a difference. And if I'm accelerating this, I'm not accelerating my projectile. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to go back to a conventional net for bowling balls or whatever ammunition I settle on. But I'm going to keep this because I think its day might come again for other things. I'm also going to have a look at this rigging here. And actually, this is a medieval way that I've done it. You see this in the illustrations. There is another way that I could do it, which actually might be easier, but because of the way this framework is with the extensions, it doesn't really work for this. So I'm going to stick with this system. And I've actually put a load cell on here to, to measure the weight in the ropes. I know that these ropes are well within the limits. I've looked at the data tables for them, they're fine. But in my gut, it just feels wrong. And <laughs> in things like this, I just like to follow my gut reaction. So I'm gonna put bigger ropes on here. Now here's something I'm not gonna change, and that's the trigger. And it's a slip hook system. So basically you've got a curve here that rotates around that point. So when you pull the lever, pull the cord, only like five, six, seven kilos, that rotates around and slips out of there. It works beautifully. It looks really alarming. It looks really insecure, but actually it's brilliant. And what it does is it allows with my five kilo pull to shoot this machine running at 250 kilos. It's not a problem. I'm not going to trust my life to it because it doesn't look great, but it really does work well. It really does. I'm out in the field. The trebuchet is loaded. Pumpkins are ready to fly. What's going on? Well, it's really a simple thing. I'm offline a little bit. You know, I'm not that dense. I'm not that dangerous. But when you want to understand things, you need to see how they operate. And you can see how they operate from that end, but you need to see how they operate from this end as well. And it 
everything just helps. So here I am, a few metres, couple of metres offline, it's slow moving anyway. So here we go. Result! Love it. I'm back with all of the changes now. And so we've changed the rigging on it. We've changed the weight. It's 380 kilos now in the counterbalance. I've got new ammunition, a bowling ball. It seems to be like industry standard pumpkins or bowling balls. A new sling and quite a lot of fear because, you know, it's heavier than it was. So here we go. Let's find out. Whoa! Yes! Yes! So, it was very, very high. We'll have a look at the GoPro later. I can't see it now. It's very high, but it's pretty long. So I'll get you a distance and I'll come back and let you know. But that was faultless. So our bowling ball did 117 metres. And we're only going to go up from there when we tune the machine, increase the weights and that sort of thing. But in the meantime, I can't really do any more filming with this tonight. It's just not going to show properly. It's too dark. But when I made the original uh, trebuchet for Age of Empires 4, the game release, I made some flaming projectiles for them. They never used them. So I've still got them in the back of the van. Now is the moment. However, they are not a medieval recipe. They are not true to what would have been. So I will come back with proper medieval incendiary charges for this thing. Anyway, let's have fun. So we've got a couple of these old charges now. Hopefully they'll go well. So Bill, light up. Fingers crossed. Well, that looked pretty cool to me. Yes, first incendiaries, but they're gonna get bigger and better from here because those are like fakes, they're not real. So that's it for today, guys. But the journey has just begun, it really has. Because as you all know, I've got a trebuchet and I am gonna use it. So I'll see you again. <laughs>